36 million years ago, give or take, the trees that are now the trunks of stone at the Mississippi Petrified Forest were living, growing plants, obviously thriving from the size of them, up in the Ohio Valley or perhaps the Appalachians, uprooted and washed here by a giant flood and quickly covered in silt when they were knotted into a log jam here where they ended up on their way to the sea. Instead of rotting in the oxygen-starved environment where they were trapped, they turned to stone as minerals leached into them. And although this forest has been dead for millennia on end, it's still growing. Because over time, as the hills under which the petrified logs are hidden slowly erode, even more of the old timbers come to light. Petrified wood's found all over the state, not just in Florida, so much so that it's Mississippi's state rock. Texas state rock is petrified palm wood. And we have petrified palm wood here too, indicating Mississippi's tropical past, perhaps. But these trees at the petrified forest are mostly fir and maple and some unknown species that went extinct long ago. They were giants when they were alive, towering over 100 feet tall, and had been living perhaps as long as a thousand years when they were washed away by the flood. But we have old living trees in our state too, not a huge number of them because pretty much every stick of old growth timber was logged out of Mississippi between the colonial era and the early years of the 20th century. The massive stands of longleaf pines were the first to go in South Mississippi. The tall straight trees were perfect as ship's masts. But no area of the state's characteristics was changed by the clearing of timber as much as the delta. Now, you'd be hard pressed to find a place in the delta that resembles the way it looked before the trees were removed and the swamps drained and the richest farmland in the world emerged from the swamp floor. And all of this rearranging of the landscape didn't take place all that long ago. At the time of the Civil War, General Grant of the Union Army had to cut channels like this one in Tahoma County to try to float a small armada of gunboats through the maze of Delta lakes, creeks, and rivers in an attempt to get his army in behind the defenses on top of the bluffs at Vicksburg that prevented capture from the Mississippi River. The reason he was using boats, the Delta was too thick with trees and too awash with sloughs to try to march through. And as the conversion from old-growth bottomland hardwoods to plantations began in the Delta, arteries of feeder rail lines were laid to bring out the timber. And it was hauled out and hauled out until by the time we came along, sites like this are what we think of when we think of the Delta. Broad, flat fields turned up in rows, with the occasional wooded creek or cypress swamp being the exception, not the rule. There are a bunch of those occasional swamps left in the Delta, not that they're untouched, most of them were also logged by the 1930s. You can go through a swamp at low water times and still see tree trunks standing at various heights, from a slab at ground level to a few feet off the ground, depending on the level of the water at the time the tree was harvested. However, not every single old one of the giant cypress trees were cut down and hauled out. For various reasons, a few were not. Maybe the tree was damaged and deemed not worth the time it would take to get it as compared to other sound trees around it, or perhaps it was just too far back in the swamp to get to. Now, I call these leftover trees giants. That's because of their girth, not their height. None of these trees are all that tall, even though the ages of a few of them rivals the redwoods of California, 1,500 to perhaps 2,500 years old. The reason they're not tall is because of the violent weather of the Delta. At some point in time, they've all had their tops removed by lightning or a tornado. So standing on the edge of a swamp, you don't notice anything out of the ordinary. But inside, on closer inspection, you find chunks of massive proportions. Well, thanks to some creative conservation measures and a recent 1,800-foot boardwalk, some of the oldest, biggest bald cypress trees left standing anywhere in Mississippi are accessible to walk out to and see at Sky Lake, just north of Belzona in Humphreys County in the Delta. Mark Simmons and other family members of his who lived nearby and owned this land knew about the trees because every time we had a drought deep enough, say every 10 years or so, they either played back in here in the Sky Lake Swamp as children or came and explored it as grown-ups. Back in the late 1980s or early 1990s, we even had our cameras in Sky Lake looking at the giant trees. I got a call from a friend of mine, Gary Arinder, who invited me to come along on a four-wheeler adventure at Sky Lake where Mark Simmons had showed Gary's brother some of the huge old trees. 
And I went and took my camera and we found some giants. World champion trees, it turns out. This one could make six typical size houses, had it been sound. Its trunk is so big, we would have had to have had about twice as many of us to have joined hands and circled all the way around it. Then we found another sleeping giant. This big hollow one, being hollow, no doubt saved it too, or it would have been hauled out. It was big enough for all of us in the swamp that day to climb up inside of and still have room for as many more to come in and join us. It was about 2011 that the state of Mississippi acquired the land where the giant trees are growing and set it aside as a protected nature area and finished the Sky Lake Boardwalk so people could walk out all the way to the big hollow tree anytime, not just in periods of drought, and get to see not only some of the biggest ball cypress left anywhere on the planet, but a lot of other swamp sights and hear a lot of other swamp sounds along the way. A delta swamp takes on an entirely different character in the winter from what it is in the summer. The constant drone of insects is replaced by silence. And the green needles of the cypress that all turned brown and fell away in the autumn, leaving bald cypress trees really bald for the dormant season, does its part to turn the gray days of delta winter into a monochrome world of dark dirt, gray skies, and gray trees. But the morning after a cold front clears, with its bright sunshine and brilliant blue sky, puts color back into the Delta world for at least that one day. And after a frosty stroll down the boardwalk into the Sky Lake Swamp on a crispy winter morning, it's easy to get caught up in the larger things that make up life, as did Billy Thomas of Brandon one morning. Many times in life, I, I see a scene that uh, it may be a rainbow, may be just an open field, or a mountainside, or, or a waterfall. And it seems that I hear God whisper to me, I did that just for you. Just that one scene, just that one view. No one else has ever been right there at that time and looked at that the way I I saw it. When I came down and saw this tree, it was just like God had said, I did that just for you. Well, these trees were saved until today several times, from the loggers' axe, from tornadoes, from disease that could have killed them over a thousand years ago, to many other calamities that didn't happen until today. And if all of this wasn't just for us, then who was it for? <laughs>